new AirPods 3, new AirPods Pro 2, but no new AirPods Max, only maybe new colors, new HomePod pad, new Apple TV HomePod FaceTime theater. I have so many questions, lossless questions. So let's do this. Sponsored by Ting. I'm breaking down all the news so you can better decide whether you wanna buy now or wait for what's next. So hit that subscribe button and bell and we can build the best community in tech together. Mark Ehrman and Debbie Wu reporting for Bloomberg. The new base AirPods will add a new design that mostly mirrors, mostly, the AirPods Pro. The earbuds will come with a new case and shorter stems poking out the bottom of each one. And this sounds like really nothing new here. This part has been widely rumored for a long time now. The only sort of part that's left up for debate is how soon will they be coming? As soon as WWDC in a couple of weeks? Or do we have to wait for later this fall to see them? But I also want to use it as a jumping off point to discuss something else that's just been of great confusion and concern in the community lately. And that's how Apple is going to sort of bridge the new Apple Music features they've announced, namely spatial audio and lossless audio with their existing and upcoming wireless headphone lineup. And lossless just means we're not using any lossy compression on these files. Lossy compression, things like JPEG and H.264 and H.265, MP3, all of these formats exist because at a certain point we needed to move, we needed to start moving a lot of information, audio files, video files, image files across the internet, but bandwidth was constricted and constrained. And we also didn't want it to just take forever to do it either. Now, AirPods were designed very much for this world with two situations in mind. One was a streaming music service that was going over the internet and was using lossy uh, files so that it could push as much information as possible with as little data as possible, as quickly as possible. And the second is that it was using Bluetooth as a, as a conduit. Bluetooth, which unlike Wi-Fi, is just a much, much smaller pipe to push all this audio through. So Apple started wondering that given those constraints, what could they do to make the sound that we were getting all that it could be, the best that it possibly could be. And that's what especially AirPods Pro and AirPods Max were designed for, to take the signal that came through, use computational audio and re-render it in a much more expansive, dynamic, interesting, uh, high quality way. But from a marketing point of view, it's become a competitive feature. It's something that every other music streaming service has been adding. So my guess is Apple just felt compelled to add it too more as a checklist feature than anything they felt was truly important or innovative, like spatial audio, which is where they're fully, you know, completely behind, which is why spatial audio got like 90% of the press release and lossless was sort of thrown in, oh yeah, by the way, at the end. And so you have these two things hitting straight on now, lossless audio on devices that were designed for a lossy world. And while some people were super, super angry and upset that their AirPods, especially their $500 AirPods Pro, wouldn't play lossy audio, it just, it wasn't being properly explained by Apple and by a, a huge swath of the media that you can't just throw a lossless signal through a lossy pipe like Bluetooth and expect it to sound really any different at all. Never mind high-res audio, which I think both physicists and biologists would agree is just a gimmick at this point. Now, HomePods will be getting lossless audio, or at least they'll be able to transit lossless audio because they're plugged into main power all the time and they use Wi-Fi, not just Bluetooth. And that is a much bigger pipe where much bigger signals like lossless audio can be pumped through. Remains to be seen what they do with it, how good it sounds comparatively, but they'll be getting the feature. AirPods don't use Wi-Fi because they can't keep a Wi-Fi connection going long enough without draining the battery significantly enough that it would make them just non-useful as a product. There are some things, of course, Apple could do. For example, they've been using the same AAC codec for Bluetooth audio for a very long time, and it's possible they could come up with a better codec that can better transit lossless audio. That's something that competing companies and other companies have done, but at the end of the day, it will still be lossless audio over lossy Bluetooth. The new AirPods Pro coming next year will include updated motion sensors with a focus on fitness tracking. And this to me just makes all the kind of sense that does. I don't know, some people will immediately jump on this and say Apple won't do it. They won't cannibalize the Apple Watch by putting fitness tracking into the AirPods. But that is exactly what Apple does. Apple is one of the few companies in the industry that never mistakes their products for their businesses. They'll replace their best-selling iPod with another iPod. They'll replace the iPod entirely with the iPhone. They'll put up the iPad as a challenger to the Mac. And it all goes back to sort of this doctrine Phil Schiller had, which said that every device 
has to get so good that it pushes against the next higher device, makes that device fight back to justify its existence. And then now those devices, those higher devices have to be even more innovative to sort of prove that they have a right to exist and challenge the products beneath them to improve again, to, to put the pressure back on. So it would just be absolutely core Apple strategy and tactics to make the AirPods take on more and more of the capabilities of the Apple Watch. And you'll start getting more and more of those fitness tracking features, a subset at first, but more and more over time. And maybe even in products like the AirPods Max, eventually the ability to stream things like Apple Music, podcasts, other things directly as well. And that especially makes sense in a world where Apple's moving towards VR headsets and AR glasses because this technology will be the audio components of those devices and they'll need to be as capable as possible. Apple only recently caught up with demand for the AirPods Max and it's not currently working on a second generation, though it has discussed launching additional color variations in the future. So this disappoints me, but doesn't surprise me and disappoints me only in that I like it when Apple uh, updates every product every year so that anybody buying any year always has the best and latest version of that product. But with especially with the more high-end niche products, Apple usually seems to only update those every couple or a few years. And with the AirPods Max, I think a new version isn't as important as a less expensive version. Just another set of $500 AirPods Max from Apple with a few additional features compared to maybe an unabashedly plastic version that sells for $300, I think that moves the needle for them way more. Apple has also begun early development of a HomePod speaker with a built-in screen. And I wanna call this the HomePad so badly, but I think Apple's sticking with the pod branding. And this is something that other companies have been doing for a while now, especially for use in kitchen or bedrooms. I always hoped that Apple would make a dock, like an Air a HomePod style dock that you could just click your iPad into and it would do sort of all of the center stage motion and video tracking, uh, show you recipes, let you do FaceTime calls, all of those things, but then you could just undock your iPad and take it with you again. I feel like that's just a far more flexible approach than a display perma attached to a HomePod in the kitchen when you're not in the kitchen most of the day. As well as a device that combines the features of a HomePod FaceTime camera and Apple TV. This might just be personal wish fulfillment on, on my part, but this sounds like sort of the HomePod theater that a lot of us Apple TV aficionados have been hoping for for a long time now, especially if it has Apple TV actually built into it. Just a home theater bar, a home bar, a theater pod, something that you could place beneath your television. And it's sort of an all-in-one solution, especially in this bold new spatial audio Dolby Atmos age. The sort of Shyamalan plot twist here though is the FaceTime camera. And that's really interesting for a number of reasons because the camera probably using something like center stage again would have to be able to see and maintain a, that sight of everybody in the room who wanted to make those sorts of living room phone calls. But also it would be an active Apple camera in the living room, which will maybe play to all the privacy first steps that Apple has been sort of leading the industry on lately. Because there have been just so many controversies with Amazon and with Facebook, and even a little bit with Google about what they do with the data that they collect from our homes to the point where a lot of people, myself included, won't put any active camera or speaker from those companies in our homes. And Apple hasn't really provided enough in terms of alternatives, which is why I've wanted them to do Apple Home routers and cameras and doorbells and locks for a long time now. So anything that both expands the scope of Apple's home theater experience, but also expands the scope of privacy within my home, to me, that's just a double win. But about the only thing we really know about all of these products right now is that they're almost certain certain to be premium as an expensive. So if you have to save up, start doing that now with your cell phone plan and Ting, because they have this scorching, scalding hot new deal, set 12, which gives 12 gigabytes of data with unlimited talk and text for just $35 a month. And you can even get unlimited for $45, whatever you need. Just go to renee.ting.com to check out the plans and see how much you can save including $25 off. Plus you get access to the best nationwide coverage in America on pretty much any phone from the latest iPhone to all the upcoming pixels. Keep your existing phone, keep your existing number if you want to as well, because the next generation of Ting Mobile is here. And to see how much you can save and to get $25 off, just click on the link below or go to renee.ting.com and get that 25 bucks. And clicking on that link really helps out the channel. Hit the playlist above for more, much more on all of Apple's audio, including HomePods, AirPods, even Beats Pods. Just hit that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.